very much about the composition of the panel is that it's uh, it's uh, it's locals, and you know one of the things that I think often happens um, is in these kinds of discussions there's a real um, uh, sort of U.S. international fund kind of center uh, view of the world, and, and that's important. But I think you know a lot of times the uh, the story that's taking place and um, and uh, driving a lot of events are really happening more at the local level with locals. And so um, with that, we have uh, Mariano Latan, a very uh, successful entrepreneur, Endeavor 2008, uh, selected in Buenos Aires, a video game company, recently did a uh, an exit um, with a company Plato, um, a very uh, successful. Um, a transaction and one that closed three, four weeks ago. So he's a, a newly minted exit um, who's still uh, involved with me. And an employee, which we'll try to get him out of that non compete as soon as possible, but uh, he's doing uh, his, his share. We have uh, Simon Olson, um, a well known uh, uh, partner at DFJ Fur Capital, which I understand is a joint venture. With, uh, with Draper Fisher, yep. um, and he's done uh, lots of deals. Um, I guess one of the notable deals on his bio is he helped um, sell a company to Google, which was the first company that Google bought outside of the United States, so obviously a uh, high watermark uh, deal. Verónica Serra, if you do private equity in Brazil and you haven't spoken to her, you're probably losing money for having people take advantage of you. She's a guiding light to uh, many people um, uh, who do private equity in the region, and particularly uh, in Brazil. When we were at Patagon, um, she uh, helped us uh, avoid a lot of mistakes. We made a lot of mistakes on our own, but most of them, they don't have told us that we were making a mistake, and we didn't heed her advice. So anyone um, who wants to avoid mistakes should uh, probably speak with Beto. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, the group. Um, what I thought where we could start maybe is just um, with some just big picture sort of trends in the region regarding private equity generally and exits more specifically and try to get your guys' reactions to these numbers. These just came out, I can't vouch for them, but they just came out by the um, Latin American uh, Venture Capital Association a couple of weeks ago. So at least I think year to year they're probably uh, relevant. So uh, just real high level, in 2009, you see uh, total investments, private equity investments, venture capital investments, decreasing 29% from 08. You see fundraising going down 43% for the funds generally that are invested in the region. And you see exits going down 30%. Um, more importantly, I think, you know, you see these trends where you see fundraising gone down, investments have seen really big steps down. And then you see exits, which have also been um, affected. So I don't know, Vedo, from your perspective. Yeah, no, I, I was. I recently prepared a presentation on venture capital and private equity in Brazil. I don't have the exact numbers, but I think that probably if you strip out Brazil from that, Brazil has much more positive numbers uh, in terms of fundraising and overall investments uh, in this past year. So. Do you have any I, I don't to that so I don't even know how relevant this really is for exit environment because the two things are really separated. Um, but uh, I think, and I also I don't have a lot of trust in, the, in a lot of these numbers. Um, so, for example, if you ask how many firms, I guess a couple things. First, I think we need to be more accurate in terms of separating venture capital and private equity because the markets are completely different and the dynamics of the markets are completely different. So in Brazil, for example, uh, there may be, let's say, I don't know, 20 firms that actually call themselves venture capital. And I would be surprised if there were more than six firms that are actually making investments. And out of those six firms, half of them are first time funds. And out of the ones that are making investments, maybe they're making two or three investments a year. So, so I really, I kind of laugh when I see these, a lot of these numbers because I think people are really mixing things up. So, and then another thing, I, I would definitely separate venture capital early stage from private equity because the 
dynamics are so different. Private equity is doing phenomenal. And every day there's more funds and, and there's all kinds of awesome things going on. Venture capital is, is still languishing and there's so many fundamental problems with the industry that it's, it's as though as much there's a lot of promising uh, companies, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of fundamental problems with the industry. So, okay. um, I had a couple more slides. Um, this one's just and the, this maybe goes to your point just a little bit. This tries to capture um, more on the front end, but obviously that drives the back end negative. Sort of what stage are people investing, um, and you know what kind of. Um, it's so you know you see early stage, seventeen percent expansion stage, more private equity and, and an exit buyout, so twelve percent. I don't know if, if overall you think that. Uh, I, I I think that. that Early stage is 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 absolutely horrendous. Venture capital is 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 horrendous, and you know, unfortunately, we, we actually talked about this at our, our practice this morning. Unfortunately, entrepreneurship in Brazil and throughout Latin America has grown at an exponential curve in the last you know four or five years. So I'm absolutely shocked at the quality of deals that I see nowadays walking through our door in, in, our, in our fund, in terms of the sophistication, in terms of the development of the companies, in terms of everything like that. But um, unfortunately, while entrepreneurship has grown, the funds have been, the venture capital funds have really stayed the same. So um, you know, I think a big challenge is really to 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 uh, to. to it's okay. So it's I yeah. Here, so. I'll, I won't. I'll, I'll spare you my <laughs> Okay. And then similarly, um, this, this slide I thought was interesting. Again, it's the front end, but I'd like to get to your guys' sort of reaction vis-a-vis -vis exits, which the data wasn't available in terms of you know where investments are being made. So you have about forty-five percent in Brazil, um, Argentina nine percent. Basically the same as Chile, Mexico, a bit more. Do you think, in terms of exit activity, that that's fairly representative of the region? Yeah, probably. Okay, great. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, set the table with some of the uh, you know, sort of big picture things. Now we'll uh, sort of get started in earnest. Um, I thought we could talk about uh, uh, what I thought we could. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. What I thought we could talk about initially was um, how to best sort of structure the company, structure the asset pre-exit. Because as we all know, if you wait too long, the forces out of the barn. Maybe Beto, you might want to speak to that, and then my dad can speak to sort of what they did to position the company before the exit in terms of preparing it. Um, you mean what type of exit? A strategic exit or an there a specific, I, I mean overall, for guys who are ready to sell, um, the first thing is really uh, building or having a company that is attractive to a buyer, right? Yeah. right? So, <laughs> and if you build a good company, obviously there's going to be other people wanting to buy it. Um, but I think one of the core things is, first, um, a lot of the times uh, local companies um, you know, f foreign international companies who want to come into markets, they always have the choice of doing it themselves or buying somebody who's established. And obviously most of the times, unless prices are absurd, it makes much more sense to buy somebody who's established. So if you have a company that's well positioned, even though if you have um, competitors, but have, has, you know, the right controls, uh, is audited, um, has, let's say, a good group of managers, because many times the founder has already put in a, a set of you know, managers that will continue with that company. So those are, I think, the most important things, a very solid client base, a very solid management team, very good contracts, and then on the financial and control part, you know, reliable information, reliable numbers. I think those are the most important factors. And Mariana, in terms of 